um, but I, I'm concerned about some details. So last year, a shareholder asked about the expectation outlined in your 2021 environmental and social framework um, that from 2025 onwards, you expect existing oil and or gas producing metallurgical coal mining or coal-fired power generation clients to have published transition plans. And you advise that you've already started conversations <coughs> with clients on these plans. Does the bank have, <coughs> or have, has the bank developed, <coughs> excuse me, any criteria to assess the quality of these transition plans? And if yes, can you please provide this information to shareholders? And can you also clarify what happens to customers who do not develop adequate transition plans by 2025 or fail to do so entirely? Mrs Cook, thank you very much for your question. You have really zeroed in on a most important part about climate change focus. Firstly, we have set targets. In the last 12 months, as you acknowledge, thank you, the board and the, the bank has aligned its temperature ambition to 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is an incredibly important position for the bank to take as we all lean together to address climate change. Also importantly this year, and what has been fantastic, has the Australian legislative target of 43% put in place. So it has enabled all of us, and particularly as we meet with large investors, but also with you and others here today, to talk about how we're actually going to support the transition. And supporting the transition is absolutely what's critical. So we've introduced the methodology of using glide paths. It's not uncommon. But our glide paths say that for, for the key sectors we've currently looked at, which I referenced earlier in the speech, we do have disclosed on page 48, I think it is, of our climate, 47 of our climate report, the glide paths for specific sectors, our performance to the sectors, and how we're going to now engage with the top 100 companies to start with on their transition plans. There are no absolutely formal guidelines as to how a transition plan should yet be laid out or to be uh, audited or reviewed. That is an engagement process that we're part of and we're talking to broader groups of investors as to how that methodology might be refined. In the past 12 months, we've spoken to 100 of our largest customers Many have transition plans, some don't, but have engaged with us to actually talk about what a transition plan might look like. It's really important that we engage with our customers and take the time in partnership to work with those transition plans, and that is what we are doing. I suspect that by 2025, there will be independent methodologies to look at those transition plans, our large customers will need to be transparent about those transition plans. And if customers do not have appropriate transition plans with appropriate to be developed over the next few years, it will be def very difficult for any bank to bank those customers. So we're working through the transition. But there is a, a really important part to the consequences of doing this. The just transition for those Australians whose jobs rely on the companies that provide those services which will have to transition. As an example, there are 800,000 customers or, or people in Australia subject to the coal value chain. What we need to facilitate a speedier improvement in supporting Australians through the transitions is to make sure that there is both a social and just transition support program for those individual Australians who will be affected. So from a Commonwealth Bank perspective, our values are care, courage and commitment. We've had the courage to set a target. We've got the commitment to deliver on our targets and to work with our customers to do so. But we must demonstrate our care for those customers who need support through the transition, whose communities will be at risk, whose mortgages will be at risk and who deserve a right to be supported in the transition. Your question, Mrs Cook, was absolutely on point and I thank you for the opportunity to responding to it. And I'm guessing you have a follow-up. Uh, <clears throat> um, I guess I just would like to know whether when you have proper, you know, formalised criteria, whether the shareholders will be informed. Um, I, I don't think anybody underestimates the fact that getting to 1.5, keeping below 1.5 is going to be a hard ask for absolutely everybody. It's not easy and I think we're all going to have to make some really, really tough decisions and we're going to have to support each other. I, I agree. I believe totally in a just transition. 
but um, we also have to encourage people to see that there are other jobs for people and help them get to that. So I wonder whether you will share more of that detail with shareholders as that goes on. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I'll get Matt to comment as well, but there are two aspects to it. The methodologies, when they're developed and they're independently established, they will absolutely be available to the entire community. That's point number one. Point number two, we are engaging with the CSIRO to develop glide paths and we've, we've set out in the environment report which entities at which stage, for instance, in the next couple of years, we'll be working on agriculture. It's really difficult, but the CSIRO as the preeminent scientific organisation in Australia is helping us work on those methodologies, and that information, when it's completed, will absolutely be made public. We expect that to be sometime early next year, but I'll get Matt to elaborate on the specifics for you, Mrs Cook. Uh, uh, thanks, Paul. P perhaps the only thing I'd add to the the Chair's comments is, as you mentioned, we're uh, very supportive of industry standards being developed. And it, it is early at the moment. We certainly have a lot of ongoing engagement with customers. We do believe that those standards will be developed. For example, the Net Zero Banking Alliance, which, as you mentioned, we're a signatory to, they're actively working on, on that. And so I do think in time there will be specific published criteria uh, for all organisations, financial institutions and as that becomes more consistent, we certainly uh, would aim to, to publish the, the specificity around that. 